Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless god is omnipotent he is all-powerful god is omniscient he is all-knowing god is omnipresent he is present everywhere satan in sharp contrast does not reflect these divine attributes satan is very powerful more than any man and more powerful than most angels satan wants to be like god and even exalts himself above god as we read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan is not anywhere near to being equal with God. The only way Satan can be all-powerful, all-knowing, and present everywhere at once is through technology. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, he will undoubtedly use the technology in the following video as part of the beast system. Nobody enjoys being pulled over. The mere sight of the red and blue in your rear view puts your pit in your stomach. Check your speedometer, see if the seatbelt's on, hope your registration's up to date, and look for the best place to pull over. Sometimes you have to eat the ticket. Other times, if you're respectful and polite or have cute kids in the back seat, they'll let you off with a warning. We'll say goodbye to America's human-to-human -human interaction with the law. We're talking about the ungodly avalanche of speed cameras that are now being honeycombed throughout America's streets, avenues, and highways. Why pay police to pull people over when a camera can just snap your license plate and mail you a ticket? Now, if you go one mile over the speed limit, smile. You're on camera, and you'll be getting a ticket in your mailbox thanks to Joe Biden who two years ago gave states billions of dollars to put up red light and speed cameras to keep us safe, quote unquote. Pay us and you won't get hurt. Does that sound like the president or a protection racket? Because a single camera in D.C. made $4 million in six months. How do you transfer wealth from Americans to government bureaucrats? Install a red light camera and watch the money pour in. And worst of all, this all stems from the infrastructure bill, our tax dollars. We're paying the government to fleece us. Peninsula, Ohio, population 500, are you ready? Averages 1,800 speeding tickets a month, a month, thanks to its new Biden speed cameras. The town's on pace to make an extra million dollars this year just from writing tickets. And to make things worse, if you want to fight it in court, they charge you 100 bucks. Most people just say, screw it and cut the check. Doesn't matter anymore if you're right or wrong. If you get ticketed, you're going to pay either way. But Peninsula, Ohio is just a drop in the bucket. This is happening everywhere. There are more than 200 towns across the country using Biden's new speed cameras. West Hartford, Connecticut is getting a dozen new ones. Portland's about to double its army of cameras. Georgia, California, Virginia, everybody gets a camera. Each one's about 60 grand, but who cares? We're paying for it. Critics say these cameras are invasive, they don't reduce crashes, and they're just a tax on the poor. And now the towns can use federal money to help pad their budgets with tickets. You're going to see fewer cops. This is how they're defunding the police. The human element's gone. You can't sweet talk a camera. You can't flirt with a robocop. No more flashing the PBA card or name dropping your uncle. No more. Sorry, officer, my wife's in labor. Welcome to the new Chinese police state where Joe Bocop is pulling you over. Radical with Shane Hazel host. Shane Hazel joins us now. Shane, this is going to explode over the next decade. I'm never going to be able to drive even a one mile an hour over the limit. Yeah, Jesse, the, uh, nothing says freedom like a, a bunch of cameras everywhere you drive. Yeah, this is a complete 1984 police state. 
Uh, I think it stems probably first and foremost from the broken incentive system we have here in America that comes from fiat money. And uh, when you can't make ends meet, uh, whether you're a municipality, a family, uh, what you're doing is trying to find other ways. And for the state, when they try to find other ways, they look to tech. Uh, and they look to make peaceful people criminals. Yeah, and next thing you know, the government has all the cameras. They're just going to say, oh, where were you? Oh, I know exactly where you were, when you were there, and where you were going and where you were coming from. But we're just trying to keep you safe, right, Shane? Uh, exactly. You know, once, once upon a time, we had a constitution in the United States. I think we're past the uh, constitution or post-constitution. But in the constitution, this should be the line in the sand for the residents of the United States, whether you're, you know, a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or if you're just, you know, against all of these things. The Fifth Amendment guaranteed you the right to your, your life, your property, uh, without any, you couldn't take it without going to court. And the Sixth Amendment obviously guarantees the right to a speedy trial, a public trial, a lawyer, a defense, and a jury of your peers. What they're doing in, in, in Ohio here is actually going after them civilly. So under the Seventh Amendment, in any case that is a, a, a greater amount than $20, that's also part of the Seventh Amendment. So it has, you're guaranteed the, the right to a jury there. When we look at this, we're seeing, you know, our, our rights being eviscerated and absolutely manipulated. Yeah, this is a complete 1984 police state. We are very close to living George Orwell's book, 1984. It seems his only error was the timing. The common thread between the book 1984 and the Bible references to the mark is this. In the book, we see a society under control of the elite, a police state as it were. There were cameras everywhere, in cable boxes and everywhere on the streets. The cameras were used to monitor all the movement of the people and keep them under control. With cameras everywhere, the elite will easily be able to crush any rebellion against them, for there will be nowhere to hide from their probing eyes. There is a coming world dictator known as the Antichrist, who is foretold of in the Bible, who in the near future will control a worldwide government, a worldwide monetary system, and a worldwide religion. He will use surveillance technology to control the peoples of the world. Is he living now? Probably. Is the Antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination? It seems so. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place. He will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people, and they don't even see it coming. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Two Christian teachers are suing after they say they were told to lie to parents about students' gender transitions at school, and then that they were punished for it. Six months ago, the teachers were placed on administrative leave for refusing to give up their religious beliefs. They wouldn't agree to use preferred pronouns, new names related to a new gender identity, or hide all of that from parents. Joining me now is one of those teachers, Elizabeth Mirabelli, along with her attorney, Paul Jana, special counsel at the Thomas More Society. The school district also has refused to allow you to go back to work. But they say they've also allowed you to be, you say they've allowed you to be a target of protest and harassment. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Well, the harassment started after the lawsuit. Um, there was a whole series of incidents, including 
my room being targeted with posters, uh, teachers getting together, confronting us verbally. Um, this occurred after the lawsuit. So I went on administrative leave, as you just said, and what I'm asking, what I've been asking for for my employer is just assurances that that will never happen again. And we've, we've not been able to get those assurances from them. According to the lawsuit, the school policy said that revealing a student's transgender status or gender diverse status to individuals who do not have a legitimate need for the information without the student's consent, and this includes parents or caretakers, can result in disciplinary action, including termination against the teacher. We tried to get more information from the school. They haven't responded, Elizabeth. Um, what was your reaction when they presented this policy? Well, I was shocked. I was um, just, actually, I felt really angry because I thought, why am I being asked to step into the role of making these life-changing decisions for my students and cutting the parents out. To me, that was so wrong. Elizabeth, people are watching this across the country going, how is this America? How is this continuing to happen in America? And Paul, I know you're currently attempting um, to hold the district, the school officials, in contempt of court. But what can you tell us about that? So the federal court here, Judge Benitez, issued a 36-page ruling in joining the, the policy, uh, he said it constitutes a trifecta of harms. It harms the students, the teachers, and the parents. And you'd think, in the face of a federal court order, that they would either rescind the policy or come into compliance with the order, at least, while there's challenge the policy. But instead, what they've done is they're continuing to defend the policy, which is obviously illegal and obviously dangerous. But in addition, they're not complying with the terms of the order. They were not supposed to take any adverse employment actions <laughs> against our clients. And today, at two, over two months, since this order has been issued, they're still out of work and not able to return safely. In the case of Lori, another plaintiff, they've continued to um, use bogus complaints that, that have been made, patently frivolous complaints, as a justification to keep her out of school. So it's an obvious yeah, to us a violation of the order, and we think the court will be yeah. very concerned about it. The court well, set a hearing for January 10th to deal with this issue. All right, this is a vendetta, clearly. And so if a parent calls a teacher and says, I noticed something is going on with my child. What can you tell me about what's happening in class? Paul, the way I read that poorly worded, worded policy, that teacher could be in trouble for answering the parent, correct? Yeah, you basically what they've set up at this school district, and by the way, this is nationwide. Little five-year-old students can dictate to their teachers their gender and th dictate to their teachers that their parents don't get to know their gender. I mean, it's a totally absurd policy, and the judge in our case picked up on that and, and sort of, in a 36-page, very comprehensive opinion, uh, exposed all the constitutional infirmities with the policy like this. But these are very common policies, and this ruling really sets the framework nationwide uh, right. to be able to, to analyze them and to sort of um, undo them on a broader scale. Well, it's all, and, has to be, uh, it's all has to be overturned. You have to go back to teaching. We have to go back to right and wrong. This is obscene and wrong across the board and, of course, unconstitutional. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed and empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate Christianity. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in Scripture as the Antichrist, as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, 
Even now many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The U.S. is increasing pressure on Israel over the war against Hamas. President Biden warned that Israel could lose global support overnight for what he called indiscriminate bombing in Gaza. Well, Israel's prime minister is publicly pushing back against the president's plan for Gaza after the war. Despite all the pressure, Israeli leaders are more determined than ever to destroy Hamas. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. President Biden called for a change in Israel's current government, claiming it's, quote, making it very difficult for Prime Minister Netanyahu to move. While pledging continued military assistance to Israel, he criticized what he called indiscriminate bombing of Gaza and added, they have to be careful. The whole world's public opinion can shift overnight. We can't let that happen. There's also disagreement about what happens in Gaza after the war. In a statement thanking the U.S. for its support, Netanyahu repeated his opposition to the administration's stance on the Palestinian Authority ruling the territory. I want to clarify my position. I will not let Israel repeat the Oslo mistake. I will not allow that after the great sacrifice of our citizens and fighters, we bring into Gaza those who teach terrorism, support terrorism, finance terrorism. Gaza will be neither Hamastan nor Fatastan. Tuesday, the U.N. General Assembly voted for an immediate ceasefire. Israeli Ambassador Gilad Erdan blasted the vote. No piece of paper, especially one that is adopted by a biased, politicized majority, will prevent Israel from defending itself against those that seek our destruction. Israel is fighting a war for her future. There is not a single member state here, not a single member state here, that would act differently in a similar situation. Wall Street Journal polls showed a majority of Americans support Israel in its fight against Hamas. 55% said Israel is taking the military action needed to defend itself and prevent another attack by Hamas, while only 25% said Israel's military action is disproportionate and going too far. Meanwhile, in Gaza, eight Israeli soldiers died in the fighting on Tuesday, while the Wall Street Journal is reporting the IDF has started pumping seawater into Hamas's tunnels to destroy one of its main military assets and drive out top leaders. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Tonight, President Biden is asking Benjamin Netanyahu to strengthen and change his government if there is to be a long-term solution to the war between Israel and Hamas. Warning Israel is starting to lose support around the world as images of bombed-out Gaza and thousands killed are broadcast around the world. Chief National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin has more for us. Jennifer, the threat from the Houthis seemed to be getting worse. What do we know right now? The Houthis and the Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Syria Sandra, the 900 U.S. troops in Syria and 1,600 American troops at bases across Iraq are effectively sitting ducks right now, taking incoming rocket, drone and mortar fire from Iranian-backed proxy forces daily. There are reports of additional attacks today, successfully stopped by U.S. forces. Late Saturday, U.S. troops shot down two incoming one-way attack drones in eastern Syria and one targeting the mission support base Euphrates. That brought the, that brought the total to 87 attacks on U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria since October 17th. That doesn't include a significant escalation of missile and drone attacks by the Houthis, which is disrupting international shipping in the Red Sea. This video, released by the U.S. Navy in conjunction with the Army-Navy game this weekend, shows the sailors on the USS Kearney, who count 24 to 0 the number of missiles and drones fired by the Houthis from Yemen that the Navy destroyer has successfully intercepted. 17,000 ships pass through the Red Sea and the Bab el-Mendab Strait near Yemen every year. 10 percent of commercial traffic, almost 9 million barrels of oil every day go through there. Over the weekend, the French Navy shot down two Houthi drones while patrolling the Red Sea, 
On that same day, Iran-backed Houthi leaders say their forces will target any ships heading to or from Israel, effectively a virtual blockade of Israel's ports, which could threaten their economy. Israel's prime minister, Bibi Netanyahu, reportedly told President Biden if he doesn't handle the Houthis, Israel will. The U.S. is focusing on expanding a multinational naval task force to address the alarming rise in attacks. The U.N. General Assembly vote is in, overwhelmingly demanding a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. The vote in the 193-member world body, 153 in favor, 10 against, and three abstentions. Now to retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General Rob Spaulding. General, I want to pick up on how Jennifer Griffin left that with using the word never is such a grave threat. Uh, this is one of the most vital areas in the world uh, economically, obviously geopolitically. That's a, uh, that's a pretty powerful statement that I don't think has come across, at least to the average American. I don't think we understand what's building up there. We don't. And, uh, you know, we, we have these uh, very nuanced vision or version of war that's going on uh, in the Middle East. And let's be clear, we're at war with Iran. They're just trying to make it look like they're, we're not at war. I think we need to recognize we're at war with Iran. They're conducting it through proxies. And we need to respond in order to get them to stop. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Let's turn now to rising anxieties over a new arms race in space. Courtney Kuby has rare access inside an Alabama facility on the front lines, guarding the U.S. against threats from China in orbit. Growing tensions between the U.S. and China now extending to hundreds of miles above the Earth. We know when we're threatened. We need to be able to counter the threat. To get an inside look at some of the latest American technology to counter the Chinese threat, we went to United Launch Alliance's factory in Alabama, working on defenses against things like Chinese satellites that can use robotic arms to drag other satellites out of orbit, meaning China could disable critical American communication satellites. They were actually able to grapple, grab a hold of one of their defunct GPS or Beidou satellites. What is the concern about them having that kind of capability in space? Anything that can interact with the spacecraft for servicing is inherently capable of interacting with the spacecraft to harm it or to gather intelligence from it. And fears tonight that China is moving faster than the U.S. in this new space race, including not just in space, but the skies just above us, not only using satellites, but spy balloons and hypersonic missiles. When you look at the threat from China in space right now, what concerns you the most? We seem to be asleep at the switch. Dean Chang is an expert on China's space program, which has more than doubled in the past five years. Do you think that China it militarily is ahead of the U.S. in space? I think the Chinese one are giving us a real good run for the money. He says another potential Chinese threat to the U.S. from space includes a cyber attack that allows China to remotely take control of an American satellite. You could say to the satellite, deorbit, come crashing down. There goes a billion dollar payload crashing into the Pacific. 
war disrupt American missile defense systems. The really scary one, of course, is if you could spoof missile early warning systems so that they don't report a missile launch. That's the ultimate night. U.S. officials tell NBC News China can already do both. And China successfully launched its own refueler a few weeks ago, which enables China to keep its satellites in orbit longer. In the meantime, the U.S. may still be months away from the same technology. And multiple U.S. military officials tell us perhaps most concerning, China launched a hypersonic missile capable of orbiting the globe over and over, then suddenly dropping to Earth before most missile defense systems can respond. We continue to look at that very closely, but that's a capability they just recently demonstrated. Some pretty disturbing scenarios laid out there. Another sign of the state of relations with China, we've learned the military hotline that President Biden touted nearly a month ago is still not up and running. Yeah, Lester, despite the agreement between President Biden and President Xi to restore military communications, U.S. officials say they are trying to set up the lines, but the Chinese have not been responsive. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? Appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.